All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. Uh, I've got one of the uh, infamous uh, word problems here that uh, probably a lot of people remember from elementary school, uh, the dreaded train, uh, the two trains problem. Um, but uh, this might be a little different, but we'll go through it. Um, it's really not that bad. Uh, it's an example of solving a word problem um, using algebra. Uh, so the problem is um, a freight train leaves Chicago and heads towards San Francisco, traveling at 40 miles per hour. Three hours later, a passenger train leaves the same station, traveling at 60 miles per hour. How long will it take for the passenger train to overtake the freight train? All right, so basically all we know right now is the speeds. They're heading the same direction. Uh, passenger trains traveling a little faster, so we know eventually it's going to overtake it. You know, probably there's a long distance between Chicago and San Francisco. So that 20 mile per hour difference, uh, a train's going to catch up, I'm sure. But let's go through the problem and take a look. So how do we want to approach this? Okay, so we want to consider that at the point the two trains are together, so when the passenger train overtakes the freight train, at that point on the rail, um, the freight train took three hours longer to get to that point than the passenger train did. Remember, the freight train had this three-hour head start. So one thing we can do, we don't know how long it took, really, for either train to get to this point. We don't know that yet, but... What we could do is we could set a variable. We could say, let's set X um, to represent the time it took for the passenger train to reach this location where it overtakes the freight train. So if that's the time, um, we, know that the pass we know that the freight train left three hours earlier, right? So the amount of time it took the freight train to get there would be X plus three hours. So I got a table here that we're setting up. And this is a good way to approach a problem like this because if you don't break it down into smaller pieces, it, it is it might seem overwhelming. Um, so what I got what I've got here is I've got the train, the rate of travel, or basically the speed, uh, the time, and then the distance, which we don't know yet. So like again with the freight train, we know it was going 40 miles per hour. And we've already decided that the amount of time it took to get to this point where the passenger train overtakes it is going to be x plus three hours. Uh, the passenger train's traveling at 60 miles per hour, and we've already decided to set x equal to the amount of time that it took the passenger train to get to that point. So what's the thing that both of these um, trains have in common? Well, at this point where they meet, uh, the point where the passenger train overtakes the freight train, um, at that point, they both traveled the same distance from Chicago. The speeds are different, and the time it took them each to get to this point is different. But the thing that's common between both trains is the distance they've traveled from Chicago to this point. So what we want to do is we want to find out what the distance is for each train at this point in a, in a formula and set them equal to each other, right? So if you remember from school, the distance is the, you know, basically your speed times the time, the rate of travel times the time. You know, if we're saying 40 miles per hour and you multiply that by units of hours, well, the hours cancel out and you're going to be left with miles as the unit of measure for distance, right? It's going to be in miles. So... Here, if we take our um, rate, our, our speed, 40 miles per hour times the time, 40 times the quantity x plus 3 would be the distance that the freight train traveled. And then for the passenger train, the rate of speed here is, uh, or the rate, speed, whatever you want to call it, is 60 miles per hour. The time is x, so 60x would be the distance traveled. Well, we still don't know what the actual distance is. Right now, we've just got you know, an expression of 40 times x plus 3 for the freight train, and we have an expression of 60x for the passenger train. 
but we've already determined that they're at they've traveled the same distance from chicago right so all we got to do is set these two expressions equal to each other we're going to create an equation uh, because we know that whatever whatever x ends up being 40 times x plus 3 is equal to 60x they've gone the same distance so from here we can actually solve we're going to end up solving for x which is going to be the time that it took for the passenger train to get to that point of overtaking the freight train. So 40 times the quantity x plus 3 equals 60x. Um, what we can do from here is multiply this out. So 40 times x is 40x. 40 times 3 is 120. So that's how we have 40x plus 120 on the left side. On the right side of the equation, we still have 60x. So if we want to try to get x on one side of the equation, we're going to end up just putting it on the right. Doesn't matter. Could be on the left. Could be on the right. Um, you know, in my mind, it's really easy to subtract 40x from both sides of this equation. If I subtract 40x from the left, this guy goes away, right? If I subtract 40x from 60x, I'm left with 20x. So now we have 120 equals 20x. Well, if you divide both sides of the, this equation by 20, you're going to be left with, well, you're going to be left with uh, 6 equals x, which is the same as x equals 6. I just, I've written it here as x equals 6, but don't be confused by that. It would be, if you divide 120 by, uh, 120 by 20, you're going to get 6 here, and you would get just x here. And I've just flipped it to the other side. It doesn't matter. 6 equals x, x equals 6 is the same thing. Um, so it took the passenger train 6 hours to overtake the freight train. Uh, and you're asking, well, how do we verify this? Like, how, you know, how do, we, uh, how do we check our answer here? Well, as an added bonus, we can check our answer since we've already said the distance both trains traveled should be the same. Well, if, um, you know, how far out from Chicago did the two trains meet? Well, for the freight train, we said the distance is represented by 40 times the quantity x plus 3. If we substitute uh, 6 for x, um, that's going to be 40 times the quantity 6 plus 3, uh, which is the same thing as 40 times 9. Uh, 40 times 9 is 360 miles. Uh, for the passenger train, we've already said here the distance is 60x. So 60x is 60 times 6 which would be 360 miles again. And 360 equals 360, so it's the same distance. Now keep in mind, we're not taking into account like anything like, you know, oh, well, the train left the station, it was zero miles per hour, and it had to ramp up to 60 miles per hour, and the freight train had to ramp up from zero to 40 miles an hour, and maybe that took, I don't know, let's assume it took a mile, two miles, I don't even know what a a typical uh, freight train or passenger train takes to get to that speed. We're, we're not taking that into account. Yeah, if you want to get really, really technical, you, you could, we would take into account, you know, that time it took to get up to 40 miles an hour or 60. But w w this is just a very simplistic problem. So the answers here would be x equals 6 hours. Uh, so, yeah, I hope this, uh, hope this has been helpful to you. Um, I would... Uh, you know, ask if you find this these videos helpful, please consider uh, subscribing. Uh, you know, likes always help on YouTube. It always helps me out. And, uh, you know, feel free to share these with, uh, with anybody um, as well. So I look forward to catching you all in the next video. Thank you.